Hello, I am Dr. Zenny Wirth, and in this video, we will be discussing trigonometry. We will discuss a review of triangles and similar triangles. We will talk about an introduction of trigonometry and trigonometric identities, and we will wrap up with triangle identities and the unit circle. Let's start with a review of triangles. Trigonometry is all about triangles. Triangles are a three-sided polygon, and the inner angles of the triangle, when summed, equal 180 degrees. Three special classifications of triangles include equilateral triangles, isosceles triangles, and right triangles. An equilateral triangle, as its name would suggest, all three sides have equal length, and all of the internal angles are each equal to 60 degrees. So we have three angles that are the same and three side lengths that are the same. An isosceles triangle has two sides that have equal length, and two of the internal angles are equal as well, such as this. But one of the angles and one of the sides are not equal. We also have a right triangle, so named because it has one angle that is equal to 90 degrees, which is a right angle. The longest side of this triangle is called the hypotenuse. The two other sides are called the adjacent and opposite sides based on their position relative to a defined angle. So if I define this angle here as theta, the side next to that angle is the adjacent and the side opposite that angle is the opposite. We use similar triangles a lot in engineering to estimate the length of an unknown side. They're used very often because as long as they have the same shape and the same internal corresponding angles, you can use similar triangles to find a proportional length that you don't know. And similar triangles tend to have the following properties. They have the same shape, but the side lengths are different. So in this case, this triangle A, B, and C has smaller sides than this triangle D, E, and F, but the shapes of them are the same. These are obviously not drawn perfectly to scale. The important thing about similar triangles is that their correspondent angles have to be equal. So this angle between A and C has to be the same angle as between D and F. The right angle has to be the same and in the same position. And the angle between C and B here has to be the same as the angle between E and F. If this is the case and the corresponding angles are the same, then the side lengths are proportional. And the ratio of the corresponding side lengths, A over D, B over E, C over F, the ratio of that are going to be the same, which makes it easy to compute an unknown length as long as you know the ratio. Let's redefine what we know from trigonometry. The trigonometry is broadly speaking, the study of right triangles. The main functions that we use and that we're most familiar with are sine, cosine, and tangent. And these functions define the ratios of the lengths of certain sides of the triangle. These are all based on a relative angle, so you always need to think about these defined by whatever angle you are referencing. So in this case, we have the same right triangle as previously. We have our angle theta, and the sine of this angle theta is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So the opposing side here divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of this angle is the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And the tangent of this angle, which is also equal to the sine divided by cosine, is equal to the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. There are other trigonometric functions, and these include cosecant, secant, and cotangent. They are related to sine, tangent, and cosine. The cotangent of an angle is 1 over the tangent of the angle, so it's flipped. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The cosecant is 1 divided by sine, which is the hypotenuse over the opposite side. And the secant is 1 divided by cosine, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. We also have some very useful trigonometric identities that I thought would be helpful to include. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. That's based on the unit circle. Secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta is also equal to 1. And cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta equals 1. We also have the double angle identities. Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta, or this expression here for tangent. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, or this expression here for tangent. And the tangent of 2 theta is equal to 2 tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta. If we're doing any sort of simplifying or integration, differentiation, any sort of manipulation with trigonometric identities, sometimes these can come in very useful to simplify the problem as needed. We also have the negative angles here. Sine of a negative angle, you can move the negative sine out front. Same thing for cosine, same, same thing for tangent. We also have some general triangle identities that are related to sine, cosine, and tangent, but they do not have to be right triangles in order to use them. So that can be very useful. 
In this case, we have a triangle here with three sides, A, B, and C, and three angles, A, B, and C. And it's important to note that the angle has to be matched with the opposite side. So when you do the notation for triangle identities, this side with a length little a matches the opposite angle, capital A. This side length B has to be opposite the angle B. And that always has to work in order to use these identities. The law of sines is here. Sine of the angle over the side, the opposite side length is the same ratio for all three sides. Sine of angle B over the opposite side length B has the same value, the ratio there has the same value of sine of C divided by C. The law of cosines is useful if you only have one angle measurement and you need to find a, a side length that you don't know. So if I only am given one angle here and I don't know the other two and it's not possible to find them, as long as I know two of the sides and one of the opposing angles, then you can find the length of the third side. And the law of tangents allows me to relate the angle measurements through tangent with the corresponding side lengths. Lastly, we have the unit circle. The unit circle is very important because it provides a nice summary of my sine and cosine relationships with any angle. It is a circle with radius of one and it centers at the origin. The circle makes a complete 360 degrees it's a line rotated, a dot rotated around an entire 360 degrees for two pi radians. And in the Cartesian coordinate system, we describe it as x squared plus y squared equals one, which is the equation for a circle. Any point with the xy coordinates that are located on the unit circle, so any value of xy that's actually on the unit circle also has a definition related to the angle that that line makes with the origin. And the value of those xy parameters on the unit circle are cosine of theta and sine of theta. So we take a degrees measurement, and on the unit circle, the value of that measurement is cosine of theta and sine of theta. The four quadrants of the circle are defined by lines that make angles of 90 degrees. So that's my first line straight up. So this is zero degrees, it's my horizontal line. Then I have 90 degrees. Then I have 180 degrees. So that's my second quadrant of my circle. Then I have a, a line at 270 degrees that defines the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant comes back to 360 degrees or two pi. I encourage you to try the following practice problems. First, some practice problems involving triangles. So here you have a right triangle with one angle that is automatically 90 degrees and one that's 30 degrees and you have one side length. So I encourage you to try to find the unknown angles and the unknown side lengths using sine, cosine, and tangent relationships and then prove the validity of what you just did using the triangle identities. So try to do the same thing, even though you know all the answers now, try to plug them in and see that you can prove that those triangle identities are hold true based on your filled in triangle. Also, I encourage you to fill out the unit circle. Uh, this is a great reference to have and some great numbers to have in the back of your mind. So you can quickly find the corresponding angle and cosine sine values. But you have here all of the common degrees on the unit circle, 30 degrees, 45, 60, here's 90, 120, 135, 150, here's 180, 210, 225, 240, here's 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2 gradients, and then 300, 315, 330, and then 360 degrees. And at each one of those points, cosine of 30 degrees and sine of 30 degrees are your xy coordinates of the unit circle. So I encourage you to actually fill out this circle and write the cosine of theta and sine of theta values for each one of these. See if you can find a pattern between them. You'll see a pattern emerge pretty quickly. And this is just a very useful reference to have. I will hope you find this video useful in your class.